بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله الكريم وآله وصحبه ومن اتبعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we're here today and we're dealing with the story of Al Bakr okay we're not talking about Surah Al Bakr we're talking about the story of Al Bakr now just to bring a few things back. Yesterday we dealt with the ayat that referred to uh, those who believe, even if they were on another religion prior to Islam, anybody who comes to Islam and they do good, they believe in Allah on the last day, and then they practice the righteous deeds of Islam, then these people, no matter what they did before, who they were before, these people will be in Jannah. They'll have nothing to worry about and nothing to fear. Okay? Then we went on to talk about the story of that we finished the story where the Khadna right? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the oath from the people. Now I just wanted to uh, reiterate the point here about them taking the, the mithaq. What what was that mithaq? You know, again, remember the people they're prostrating, they just they just woke up after being dead. Right? And they were told, take the book, right? And now they say they're promising Allah that they will obey it. Okay? Anytime you get told that, because remember, what did they do? When, they, when Musa said, take the book, they said, no. Right? And then Allah immediately started to punish them. So now when he brings it back to life, now when I tell you to do something, you're going to do it, right? Yes. They took the promise. This is the point here as we go into the next story. That after they had, Allah had made them die and brought them back up to life the mountains over their head the mountain of Tur is over their head and they are prostrating out of you know joy that they're now alive again right and Allah's messenger Musa is telling them look you make a promise now not only are you going to take the book but you promise that the next time or any time Allah tells you to do something you're going to do it right and they say yes we are, we, 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 we going to do that they give their promise okay and then they quickly break it. How do they break it? In this story that we're going to go right now. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa idh qala Musa li qawmihi Inna Allah ya'murukum An tazbahu baqara Qalu وَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُؤَا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ So here he begins it by saying, And remember when, what is? And remember when Musa said to his people, I'm sorry, When Musa said to his people, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمُ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَ Allah has commanded you all to slaughter a baqara. Now what's going on here? What happened was there were three men. This is another story from Bani Israel. There were three brothers, okay? Their father died and he left them wealth, equal amount of wealth. One of the brothers spent all the wealth that his father had given him as inheritance on poor people and doing good deeds, you know? giving it away to those that need, till he was, didn't have anything. And he died. He only left his son with a cow. Okay, one buckler. That was it. Then he had another son who spent half. He used half of the wealth that he had gotten from his father and spent it on people, giving it away in charity. So he was like a middle class person. He had a medium amount of wealth. Okay? Then he had the third one who didn't give nothing away. And he became one of the richest people in the whole town. Right? Now he had a son and a daughter. And all three of them had sons. Right? And the, the, media, the, middle, the middle wealth person. What do you call a middle wealth person? Middle class. Middle class? Let's, say, let's say middle class. But it's, I don't like to use the word class. Like, didn't give him more class. But he was, he was a middle class well. Huh? Average wealth, well, a little bit more than average wealth. And the rich person, they both had daughters too. Okay? These three people, three brothers. So, 
The one that was an orphan, his son, was one. But he was poor, he didn't have anything. Okay? Except for what? Yeah. The Bakra. Right. Now, so the, the rich man and the middle aged man, they married their sons and daughters to each other. Okay? They married their sons and daughters with each other. And the middle aged man, he went to go live with the rich one. Okay? He married his daughter and started living with him. And the rich one, he went over to live with his wife, which was from his other uncle. Okay? The middle aged uncle. Now, the second uncle, the middle age, the middle wealth uncle, died. Okay? He had medium wealth. So now who's spending on the family? The rich one, right? The rich brother. Because in those days, as it should be, the, the, the brothers provide for each other's families. Okay? They take care of each other. So the one uncle, the rich uncle, he's the only one left. And he's providing for all the families, right? I'm sorry, he's not providing for the well, rich one. I mean the poor one. Why? The yatim. Remember, they didn't want to marry the young person, the yatim, the orphan. Why didn't they want to marry him? Because he's poor. Because he's poor. He didn't have anything. So the, the, the rich one married the middle, the middle class one, okay? Medium wealth one. And they kept him out of it. They didn't even really deal with him. So he's just provided for his children, okay? The rich one's provided for his son and his daughter, that way. So the one that's living with him, the son that's living from him, is his nephew, right? Married to his daughter. He said, you know what? If I kill this old man, then I will get more of the wealth because what comes to my, my wife you know, I'll get to take that from her, right? Because I'm the nephew and my other nephew, we'll get some more what, what mouth being the nephews of this man, and I'll be rich, okay? I'll be rich because I got some, he got the middle class wealth as well, right? So he was impatient. So what he did is he killed his uncle, right? He murdered his uncle. Don't know how he murdered his uncle. Doesn't tell us how, okay? Hold on, why is that important? Okay, anyway, he killed his uncle, right? And he took the body and he threw it in the neighborhood of another tribe from Bani Israel. So that they wouldn't suspect him, okay? And he didn't say anything. His, his wife didn't know anything. She was a righteous daughter. She didn't know anything. She went to look for her father. She didn't find her father. She ran home, said, you know, my father's missing. You know anything about it? He was like, no. But he had just killed him and threw him in the next neighborhood at nighttime. So in the morning time, the, the, the caller started calling out, hey, someone killed somebody over here in, in the, the, near the tribe of so-and-so. And so all the bad Israel, the men, they come to see who is this person. And they see that it's the wealthy man from the, another tribe. And so the people from his tribe saying, hey, you guys killed him. And of course the son, the nephew I should say, is saying, no, one of you guys killed my uncle. You know, my father-in-law. Oh, what a good man he was. Well, no, we're not going to accept anything but the, the biggest dia. Okay? You know, guys, understand the dia is the blood money that you have to pay when you wrongfully kill someone or we go to war. Okay? You gotta give us the biggest amount of the we're not gonna accept anything but the most amount of deal that we can accept from this man because he was a righteous man, he's killed unjustly, and here's the proof he's right here in your neighborhood, right? So now he's gonna get the blood money, the dia, that's gonna come to him, and he's gonna get the inheritance, right? So he's thinking he's gonna come up big like this. And the other people say, no, we didn't do it. You know, you guys great. And they say, no, you guys did it, and they start arguing amongst themselves. So the wise people amongst themselves says, hey, why are we fighting? Why are we about to go to war over this thing? And here is Musa, a Nabi. He's a prophet. Let's just go to Nabi Allah, Musa, and ask him. Okay? Let's ask him. So they went to Musa and they said, Musa, there's a person who got killed in our neighborhood. We don't know who did it. Ask Allah right now, this hour, right now. Tell him to come and give us the, 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 the answer who did it. But we want it right now. Is this the proper mentality they're supposed to have? Yeah. You know? Because they said, Let us know this very hour who did it. Okay? We don't want to wait. 
So Musa replied to them, he said, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tadbahu baqara. He says, Ya Lord, Allah make dua. Ya Allah, Allahumma, here is Bani Israel, they're asking you for the hour. He says, Allah commands you to slaughter a cow. They said, are you playing games with us? you making a joke with us? Are you being sarcastic with us? We asked you to come about asking about a death, a murder, and you tell us to go slaughter? You see their mentality? What did they just promise? Weren't they just killed? Not killed, but caused to die? Didn't they just make the meat foul? The, the, the promise to Allah that if he told them to do something again, that they would do it immediately and not ask questions? Didn't they just do that? Yes, but you see right away, this is what Allah says when he says, ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ You see, it? then you all turned your back right away. مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ Right after that. And if it wasn't for the favor and the فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ is that there was prophets with you, Harun wa Musa, and there were some righteous people amongst you as well. Okay? Because not all of Bani Israel were criminals. There were some righteous, as we see from the black, the story we learned about the people of the fish. When we went, let's just briefly, when we went over the story of the fish, there were three types of people, right? One people, they went out there and they, they got the fish during the Sabbath, meaning by playing a game, a chida, deception, right? They went and got that, those fish. And some people, they didn't say anything about it, but when the fish came, what did they do? They ate the fish. And then there was a third group who said, no, this is haram, and tried to stop them from doing it. And when the fish came, they said, mustahil, we're never going to eat this type of fish. Any fish that you got on the Sabbath is haram, we're not going to eat it. Okay? And, and then some of the ulama make a point, the Mufassir said, if someone was burning down your house, you came up in your neighborhood, and someone was burning down your neighborhood, destroying your neighborhood, you're going to sit here and not say anything? Somebody's going to, somebody's stealing your, your father's car. You're going to sit there and say, oh, not my job. You going to do that? No. Yeah. No. You're going to fight. You're going to argue. You're going to try to stop them from destroying your place. But now we're talking about the deen of Allah. Someone's trying to destroy the deen of Allah. Break the game, break, break the, the laws of Allah. And you're not going to say anything about that? So, we say that the, 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 the sunnah is like the safina to nuh. The, the sunnah is like a, 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 a ship. Okay? And they give the example of the ship. If everybody on board, on board that ship is tied together in the success, in the success of the ship, right? Yeah. So let's say the, the people in the bottom floor of the ship, they have to come up to the top floor to get water, right? No. no. But they get tired of walking up to the second floor, to the third floor, to get to the top deck of the floor. Then they get some water. Then they take, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, come all the way back down. It takes them a long time. So they say, you know what we're going to do? Why don't we just cut a hole in the bottom of the boat and we get water that way? Okay? They're going to drown the boat and everybody on it, right? They're going to sink the boat and everybody on board is going to drown. So what do the people on the top have to do? They have to stop them from drilling the hole, drilling the hole first, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have to cooperate with them so that they can get water, right? Mm -hmm. You guys get the point? Mm -hmm. So this is how we have to be in the dunya as well. As we live our lives as Muslims, we have to cooperate with each other because the success of the whole ummah is tied to everyone in the ummah. We all have to do our part in protecting the sharia and the way we live. Okay? And that's our deen. So they came to Musa and said, Are you playing the joke on us? Are you taking us for fools? Asking us this? He said, Musa replied to them, says, I seek refuge in Allah. That I would play, that I would be jahil. Meaning, it shows a particular point. Only Juhala play games like that. Okay? See what Musa is teaching us a principle here? A hukum, a moral rule, that only fools, only, you know, ignorant people 
Play those types of games, sarcastic games. You ask me something serious, and I give you a, a smart aleck remark in, resp in response. Because that's what they were accusing him of. We ask you about a murder, you're going to give us a smart aleck remark like, go slaughter a cow? No. A'udhu billah. And we only see a prophet seeking refuge in Allah from something that is haram. Okay? He doesn't seek refuge in Allah from something that's makro, but something that is haram. Which goes back to the concept of istihzad, to be sarcastic. Yastahzi'un billah, right? They're playing games, they're trying to be sarcastic with Allah or with this deen. And Allah yastahzi'u bihim. Wa yamudduhum fi turyanihim ya'mahun. And he lets them drown themselves, go blindly about leading themselves astray. Okay, because of their istihzad, what we call sarcasm. Okay? So we should not be foolish or jahil and respond in serious matters with smart aleck remarks. Okay? That are not true. Okay? Now, if you're joking with your friends and everybody understands that you're playing a joke, the joke has to have criteria. Number one, it has to be truthful. You get my point? It has to be true. And number two, it can't be at the, the cost of someone else. A joke has to be something that they, everybody's going to laugh at, not at the sake of someone else's honor. Does that make sense? No. Does no. everybody understand that? No. Okay. So then he goes on to say, so then they say, after they get told that, then they say, you know what, Allah, I'm sorry, then they, they, make, they ask him, say, look, make dua for us. Ask your Lord, right? Again, Rebecca. They're not accepting him as their Lord, right? Ask your Lord to clarify us which cow it is. Which cow it is? What cow? Now, if they would have just slaughtered any cow, it would have been enough for them. Why? Because he says, Antadbahu Bakara. Okay? That's what he tells them. Go get any cow. Bakara. Any Bakara. Okay? So they could have gotten any Bakara they want. But they kept making conditions, so Allah kept tightening it up for them. Making it more difficult for them. They want to make it difficult? Okay, Allah will make it difficult for them. Stop. So he says here, okay, I'll call my Lord and ask. So he makes dua to Allah. And Allah says, Inna baqaratun la faridun wa la bikum. Okay? I want to obey that. It's not old and it's not young, super young. Okay? It's between those two. Fafalu ma tu'maru. So do what you've been told to do, okay? Do what you've been ordered to do. Now you got some guidance. Do what you've been told to do. What did I say? Now they want to know what color it is. They say, make dua to your Lord to clarify to us what color is it. So he makes dua to Allah, and Allah clarifies it again. He said, it is a bakra that is safra, golden. Okay? We say golden, but it's really brown or light brown. You know, that golden color. You know, safra un shining, you okay? Her color. It is the pleasure, the joy of anybody who looks at it would like it. Okay? Anybody looking at that, that cow would enjoy to like it and think it looks nice. Okay? So what do they do next? They still go. So now they go different. They say, call on your Lord again and ask him to clarify to us which bakar, what kind of bakar. And they use the word bakar here, type of cow. What? Give me some more specifics. All the cows are the same to us. They're, we're confused. They're vague. We can't tell the difference between one cow and another. Okay? And we want to, and then they use the word, Insha'Allah. 
Okay? Insha'Allah lamuhtadun. We want to, insha'Allah, without doubt, by, by the pleasure of Allah, we want to do what Allah wants us to do. So we want to be guided. So some of the ulama, they say that when they use the word insha'Allah, then that was when they got success. Then they got so clear that there was no way they couldn't know which, which baqara it was. And Allah tells us in the Quran, وَلَا تَقُلْ شَيْءٍ أَنِّي فَاعِلُوا ذَلِكَ إِلَّا أَنْ أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ In the same surah, Musa says, سَتَجِدُونِيَا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ صَابِرًا And Allah sabbarahu and made him patient until he wouldn't get run away the first time when he sunk the boy, when he killed the boy or drowned the, the uh, I'm sorry, drowned the ship until he killed the boy, right? With the story of Khadr. So we see that inshallah is the key here. You say inshallah and, in, and inshallah you get what you are looking for. So here they said inshallah and Allah made it clear to them which bakara exactly they were to go after. Okay? And they said, but they were being, they really didn't want to, you know, find the cow, right? They were just being difficult for, for no reason. Okay? There's no real reason for them to be this difficult except that they were stubborn like that. So here it comes again. So he made dua to Allah. And it comes back, he said, Innaha Bakaratun. It didn't pull the ground, it didn't plow the earth, and it didn't pull the heart to go around pulling water, you know, bringing water and everything. It's not a work animal. It hasn't been put out to the farm to work like that. Okay? Healthy, strong. It's, it's clean, meaning it has no marks on it. Right? Clear from having any marks or, or blemishes on its skin. Okay? He said, and, and they, this is what they said. Now you brought the truth. Well, listen to their language. Did he lie in the beginning? Did Musa lie in the beginning? Yeah. For them to say, now you're telling the truth? No, he came with the haq from the very beginning. But this is their mentality. Not only are they wrong, they're going to tell you you're wrong. Okay? And so this story is is filled with their arrogance and their lack of respect. Okay? So they slaughtered it, but they almost didn't do it. They didn't really want to do it. So they were very reluctant to do it. Now how did they slaughter it? It happened to be, remember I said there were three sons, right? I said that the first son spent everything he had, right? Giving it away, fi sabilillah. Spending on the poor and those in need, right? And he only left his son what? One cow. One cow, that's the cow. And his mother told him, your father, Matt, your father, may Allah have mercy for him, he died and all he left us was this cow. And so, you know, a cow in the culture of Bani Israel was a big deal. You would think they're Fulanis, you know, or Oromo or something like that. Because if the Oromo and the Fulanis, cow was a big deal, okay? So as a cow, it was a humongous deal with them. And they would get the milk from the cow and get the butter from the cow and they keep the cow, right? Like that. It was a sign. So she said he only left was his cow, so they were taking care of the cow. They were drinking the milk from the cow. So the people came and said, yeah, Fulan, so and so. Here we are, Bani Israel, give us this cow. He said, no, I'm not going to give you my cow. You know, why would I give you my cow? So well, here comes the prophet uh, Musa. He told us that we have to get this cow to side, the side of the fair. He said, no, nope, the cow is not for sale. So they went back to Musa and said, Musa, they won't, we won't, he won't sell us the cow. And Musa told them, Ishtaruha. You have to buy it then. Okay? Whatever the case is, this is you have to buy it. Now they know now. Remember, they've just been told that you made this promise that you get told to do something, you have to do it. They just were caused to die, right? 
and they're still trying to play games, right? You get the point now? Now why they're trying to play games? They don't want to say no outright, so they want to say, oh, we don't know which cow it is. You get it? So they go back and they try to buy the cow. And the mother said, he said, I, Lazim, I, I, I take shorter with my mother. I have to take my mother's counsel. And the mother says, I'm not going to sell it to you till you give me its weight in gold. Give me the weight of this cow in gold and then I'll give it to you. So they gathered amongst themselves and they couldn't do that. They said, well, we can't afford to do that. We don't, we don't have that like that. Whether they had it or not, Allah knows best. So then she said, okay, well then I want you to fill its skin with gold. Okay, lay the skin out and fill the whole, when you, when you, once you slaughter it, fill the whole skin with gold. Okay? So it would be like a case, like a, like a case full of gold, the whole skin. That's a huge fill amount of gold, right? Yeah. So they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to come off that type of money. But here it is, this, this poor family, and they say it's one of the poorest, if not the poorest family amongst Bani Israel, is holding all of them hostage now. You have to do this. And if not, you're going to get in trouble. You just got killed. Not killed, but caused to die, right? So they had to do it. They, 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 they promised it, and they slaughtered the cow, and then they filled her weight, the weight of the cow with the skin, with gold, and gave it to them. And they became the most wealthiest family in Bani Israel, and it stated the one with the most taqwa, okay? Family with the most taqwa as well. So they have wealth and taqwa. Khair al-dunya kam. It's the best of all of the dunya, when you have wealth and taqwa, okay? And may Allah give us taqwa and wealth. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Was the son angry that he didn't get money? No, he got money. He got gold. No, I mean the son Oh, we're going to talk about the son who killed the uncle. We're going to get to that now. Okay. So then they took, they slaughtered the cow, and they said, okay, Musa, we slaughtered it. Okay? And Musa came, and he made dua. The law says... He finishes the story. And one of the things they talk about the story is how the end of the story explains the beginning. Allah says, he says, what could mean? What, what is? And remember when? You all killed someone. Meaning, you all started to argue about it. Okay? It was going around and round trying to figure out who did it. No, you did it. No, you did it. You, they were disagreeing about that whole issue. وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ And the law was exposing, was going to bring out, was bringing out what you all were hiding. فَقُلْنَا ضُرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا And so it was told to Musa, strike the dead body with a piece of the slaughtered animal, slaughtered cow. Now some people say it was the leg. But we know here, the Ulama are very specific by saying, Allah did not tell us what piece, right? Just like he didn't say, which cow to slaughter. He said, بِبَعْضِهَا With a portion of it. So Allah knows best what part of it, and it doesn't increase us anything to know what portion. If it were, Allah would have told us. So whatever part he touched the man or struck the man with that part, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى And like that, just like that. The man, the dead man, came back to life. Okay? He came back to life. And Allah showed you his signs, the ayat of Allah, so that you can gain an intellect and know how to think better. When you know that Allah can do things, it helps you think. Right? When you know for sure Allah sees you, you know not to act up a certain way because you can think better, right? You know Allah sees you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us this. The man came back to life and started to talk to Musa. Some, some of the, the Mufassirun said that he had more vigor when he woke up from death 
than he did when he was first alive. Okay? Meaning he had more energy when he first woke up. Others say that he just, they just narrate that he spoke to Musa. And Musa said, who killed you? Who murdered you? And he said, my nephew. Some say he said, my nephews. Some said, my nephew, after I married him to my daughter, you see how he pays me back? I, met, I let him live in my house. And you see how he repays me? It sounds just like a, a, a New York Jew at least, you know? He says this type of thing, and he points him out. He points him out. 